You know, even though he was only on the screen for three seconds, seeing Josh Keaton voicing the spectacular Spider-Man and seeing him there in his full animated glory, oh my gosh, he brought me so much joy you wouldn't even believe. Well, Laser dude, you're watching another movie review, and this time we got Across the Spider Verse. This is the sequel to Into the Spider Verse. Uh, it, it, this is uh, who this movie, guys. So it is a few years after the events of the first one. We got Miles Morales uh, being Spider Man. He's having a classic Spider Man struggle of you know balancing his school life and his Spider Man life together. You know, classic problems with his parents and stuff like that. But all of a sudden, everything opens up when he finds that there has been someone who has made technology allowing him to jump between universes. We see Gwen Stacy tracking him down and hanging out with him, and he accidentally gets roped into all of these different wild multiverse things going on. I actually really like the scenes with him and Gwen a lot, especially because there's like flirtatious spider web swinging. I mean, come on, guys. I never thought I'd see that because whenever there's, you know, romantic stuff while swinging, it's like, well, you know, Mary Jane hanging on to Spider-Man after he saves her. But this is like them flirting while swinging. It's like Superman and Lois flying. It is, I've never had a scene that made me feel that way, just like that scene in the original Superman. And the thing that I want to say about this movie is part of me is a little reserved. And I, the reason I say that is because this is half a movie. Uh, you know, this is, you know, as everyone's known by now, this is a uh, first part of a two-parter uh, type of movie, and the, the I will say that it sets everything up in a real interesting way. The cliffhanger is one that had me on the edge of my seat. Uh, I was really excited. Let me just say, I just really like this movie. It's one of those things where it's just like, it's not as complete of a movie as the first one, so the first one can stand on its own a lot more, but the stakes are a lot higher in this one, and if they pull it off in the next one, it will be a really good, like, I, I, I kind of feel like this is like almost a... I, you know, as long as the sequel pays off, this one feels will feel like it's done really well. Uh, let me just go into, uh, first of all, the animation. Oh my gosh. This animation is filled to the brim with references. Your brain cannot process it. Even just like little details, like when we go to Gwen's world and we are being in that world, every page feels like it's from her art covers. You know, there, there's this, you know, very famous, like, uh, this is like Gwen's art style, and this was in the Spider-Gwen that was really made her popular, and the, her whole world looks like this. It's very unique. I will admit, they implement all these different animation styles together perfectly. It's absolutely amazing, including live action. There is a scene where characters are interacting with live action people, and it doesn't feel off you know it still feels like it's all part of this same universe together you know there's no moment where i'm just like oh this is like some roger rabbit stuff where this is clearly fake well not to badmouth roger rabbit that is amazing in its own right but this is like this is bringing humans into an animated world and making it feel natural and that is a great accomplishment i love all the references if you have any obscure spider-man that you love it's in here we got you know one from the uh, insomniac video game we got every single one lego spider-man it's really quite impressive and uh, now i will admit uh, this movie starts off a little slow I have a feeling since it knows it's kind of like a two-parter type deal that it allows itself to, you know, establish the characters and what they're going through a little bit. So it takes a little bit to get going. But there is still, like, action scenes and great animation implemented through it. Uh, there's a scene with the villain called The Spot. And, like, he's just starting out as a villain, so he doesn't really know how, what to do or how to be a villain. But, you know, he's 
doing his thing, and a lot of the times, like, Miles will try to punch him, but he'll go through a portal and then end up hitting himself. Now, I was really interested to what was giving me the moral dilemma, because we all saw that there was the scenes where Miles was being chased by all the different Spider-Men, and so I was like, well, what is the moral dilemma with it, and what is he going against it? And I was wondering if, like, the... You know, Miguel was going to be, he turned out to be more of a villainess who was trying to control the different universes. But I actually really like what they did with him. From his perspective, the stuff that he does in this movie is actually necessary. And on some level, I'm kind of almost with him. You know, I, I'll go more into, into the spoiler part of the review, but part of me is not necessarily sure that Miles is doing the right thing, but that what makes the dilemma such an interesting dilemma and gives it, like, that gravitas that this is not just an uh, evil guy trying to do evil things. This is, you know, a very complex situation. And I feel like... Um, the other characters are implemented very well, too. Like, we have the tension between, of course, uh, Gwen and Miles, that they seem to have an actual good relationship going on, but also that they're drawn apart because they're from different universes. And also you got the uh, tension that Miles is having with his parents and how they are expecting more from him, but he wants to tell them who he is and... And but he he just isn't sure if it's right or if they would you know not like him because of it or anything like that. I will admit going back to the animation for a quick sec that uh, there were times where I was like finding it a little hard to to like some things were a little blurry and stuff and I was just like huh um is that the way it's supposed to be like there was literally a moment where i'm just like wait is this 3d and i looked behind me to see if anybody else had 3d glasses and i was just like wasn't wearing them but nobody else had them so i'm like okay so no it's not it's just a little bit blurry i think that's like kind of on purpose because it's all these different dimension hopping sort of things and everyone's from a different dimension but I, I will admit there is a little bit of an inconsistency. It's like, if everybody's universe looks so different, and like, in the last one, we had like, a uh, noir Spider-Man who was black and white and was, you know, like, consistent with his universe, and Spider-Ham who was consistent with his universe. Why did Gwen change when she arrived? Because her universe was a lot more colorful and stylized. Than this one was, but one of those things that if you—that's when you're overthinking it. You're overthinking about it if you think about it that much. You know, in this next one, I don't actually know necessarily what's going to happen. You know, I have a feeling that like I don't know if Miles is going to realize that he has to let go of this whole situation, or if you know he is going to be proven right in the situation. There is just a lot going on with it, and you know maybe. Things will collapse in the end, and I uh, will we'll have to see what that looks like. But uh, I, I want to say that I really enjoyed uh, Enter the Spider. No, uh, yeah, Enter this Across the Spider Verse. Across the Spider Verse. Sorry, there's just a lot of yeah, because it was Into the Spider Verse, is Across the Spider Verse, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to what the next one is. Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I, I didn't. Really, as I said, the, the beginning's a little slow, but there's still some fun action stuff that's going to keep you entertained. But overall, this was a very fun ride with all the great animation and great characters and really relatable in all sides. I really did find it relatable. I did really like the moments that the characters have to go through and the twists that came along the way. So I'm going to be giving Across the Spider-Verse an 8 out of 10. This is a really great movie that the whole family can enjoy and it is something that is really leading me into thinking that if they nail this, if they get the next one, this could be one of the best superhero trilogies of all time. Like if the next one doesn't live up to the hype that this one has built up, then I will say that it's probably, a, you know, might retroactively rank lower. You know, it's like, like Infinity War was amazing and Endgame was pretty good, but you were hoping that it was the same as Infinity War, so part of it takes a little bit of the wind out of your sails sort of thing. But I really trust these guys as creators to really do something really special with this movie, and so, yeah, I'm looking forward to see how this all wraps up. So now uh, I'm gonna be going into the spoiler part of the review. If you haven't seen this movie, but you want to, please go away. <laughs> you know, I, I wanna make sure you go in fresh. Uh, now, 
So spoilers in three, two, one. Now this the conflict of this movie is that every single thing relies on a canon that every single Spider-Man has to go through certain struggles and certain o things to overcome in order to be Spider-Man. And I kind of really love the way they show that, where we show, like, everyone has an Uncle Ben who dies, or an uncle who dies, and then, you know, in Miles' case, it was Uncle Aaron. And every single one also has, like, a cop that they have to, uh, like, a captain that, uh, you know, encourages them along the way. And also... The, you know, and it goes through these moments and say, like, this is what makes you Spider-Man, and they are canon, you cannot mess with them. And then he, Miles, realizing that his dad is going to be the one who is killed and will inspire him to be better, it's an interesting quandary. Like, as I said, uh, part of me is with Miguel, because Miguel is the one who is, uh, you know like, right in a lot of ways. If what he says is true, then, yeah, you have to sacrifice the one life in order for your person, you know, even for your life to, you know, you have to, well, okay, you, uh, basically you have to sacrifice the, the life of someone who you love in order for the whole universe to stay alive, because you wouldn't be saving them anyway. But, on the other hand, Part of me is thinking what Miguel did and what Miles is doing is different. Because, like, Miguel, his thing was like, well, I went into another universe that already had a Miguel that died, and so I figured I could take his place and nobody would notice. But that was you forcing yourself into a world that you didn't belong in, and because of that, the, multi the universe collapsed on itself. So that's different from what Miles is doing. Miles is affecting his own timeline. You know, it's not uh, impl forcing himself or implementing himself on other timelines. Now, I'm, I have a theory. I have a theory. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that it's, you know, because we gotta have the good guys be right, and, you know, Gwen seems to think that maybe Miles is right, because if her dad's retiring, maybe he won't be killed. Uh, I feel like it might be the computer program, you know, that uh, is in Miguel's head. It might be the computer program that is the real root of all of this. I don't know why, I don't know how, but the computer program is the only one that's in a position to lie about certain things and to manipulate the events going forward, because he's like, the data shows it this, and she's like, yep, here you go, here's the data. Like, she could be manipulating the data into a way that forces these events to transpire the way she wants them to. I will say they're getting a little bit dangerously precarious on that fourth wall a little bit, like the canon, I mean, that's what we referred to, you know, what is canon, what is not, meaning what really happened, what didn't, you know, uh, it's getting precarious to be like, hey, the third one will have Miles talking to, uh, you know, Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, and, uh, you know, <laughs> or... or uh, well, who who met the mouth, Joe Quesada? You know, uh, anyway, you know, it's like, it's gonna, it's gonna do that, and... She's the only one in a position to manipulate data and force things her way. And, you know, I wonder if it's possible, and I don't know if they're going to do this, but I was thinking about, like, maybe we, the last time we saw Doc Ock in the first one, she got hit by a bus. Maybe she got, went to the Spider-Man 99 universe and took over this, uh, you know, uh, AI artificial intelligence, and she is, like, using this to lure them all into a trap so she can destroy them all in every single universe. So the Doc Ox of all the universes win. Far outlandish theory, I know. But and I, that's more just a half-baked one. But I think that the computer is the one in position to be the, the douchebag in this sort of scenario. Um... I, I really do like kind of Gwen's dilemma with this, how she wants to, uh, you know, hang out with Miles and to be a good friend with Miles and everything, but she's also, in, she has knowledge that there are in her mind that there are certain kind of events that you cannot uh, disrupt and that his dad dying is one of them. I want to see on the rewatch, I didn't really know it's the first time because I didn't know to look for it, but I want to see if her looking at his dad was like the reason she left the first time. If she was like, oh, I, I just can't be around this guy because I know he's going to be dead soon. 
And, uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see, and of course, okay, we're in the spoilers, so I want to talk about the other universe. It was such a good idea. You know, it scans you and sends you home to your other universe, but what does it scan? It scans his DNA, and his DNA was overwritten by the spider that bit him, and I actually really like that idea that that spider was meant for a different Spider-Man in a different universe, and that, Sp uh, that Miles himself is an anomaly, and that he is not technically supposed to be canon in this way. Now, of course, he is, you know, he, like the writers wrote him and, and, and made him and created him and everything, but, you know, in this universe, he was an accident, and that wasn't supposed to be, and I like that when he goes into the, you know, send me home machine, that it sends him back to a universe that isn't his, it's the one that the, that spider should have bitten somebody, and he comes face to face with a version of himself that wasn't mentored by his dad, that was mentored by his uncle. And because of that, we see a Miles Morales who is taken over as the Prowler, and is much more dangerous, much more uh, devious. I also like that we hear a little bit in the voice, uh, Donald Glover does such a good job because he was like, hey, I'm going to make sure that when I'm in the evil version, this is a guy that was raised more by his mom and Uncle Aaron, so his mom probably has more of an influence on his voice because he's talked with more of the Spanish side as the evil, not to say that that makes him more evil, but, but you know, since he was taken after his mother more, that means he was, you know, less... You know, he, he had a lot more influence on his mother's side and probably took after her a lot more and picked up her accent a lot more. But I, I just really, this Miles Morales, I find so relatable. I find him so f uh, funny. I think he's good. I like, the, like, there's a scene where he's talking to his dad and he's just cracking me up the whole time because he's trying to have, like, an adult conversation, but it's about him. And it's just really, really good. And um, also his struggles with him wanting to help and be a part of something bigger. But when he realizes the cost, it's like, no, I will not do that. And the the way he, like, uh, you know, takes this outsmarts the other Spider-Man by learning them all away from the main facility and then going invisible. Because I was like, why didn't he go invisible before? And I thought, I thought about that. I was like, he can go invisible. Why isn't he doing so? And then when he says, I learned all the Spider-People away... I'm like, that actually makes sense. You lure them all away from the main base, and then you go invisible, and now everyone's miles away, <laughs> miles away from it, and they don't even know where you are. And so, yeah, that was actually pretty good and pretty smart, and I, I actually really liked it. And, uh, yeah, I actually really buy Miguel's sort of, uh experience because he is going through the trauma that he caused the universe to implode on itself and and I think that's that's an interesting one I think that you know him being that part of that soul sort of thing that he he caused the universe to implode on himself and now is ultra serious I also like that we bring in old Peter, and he is a father. We see him have Mayday, and that's actually really, really cute. Although he's totally irresponsible with her, should not be bringing her on on these big things. But um, uh, like I like, there's a scene where he's like conflicted, and I but I get why his character is conflicted and why he wants to help Miles, but also thinks that it might not be a good idea. And I feel what why Miles feels betrayed about that. Like when they started the the movie and then like Gwen is like yeah I betrayed my friend I'm like why would you betray Miles it doesn't make sense but when they gave the reason I'm actually like oh you know what that actually makes pretty good sense but I'm thinking that there's going to be some twist thrown in the wrench I think that there's going to be something that but here's my another prediction I think there's going to be a reason a uh, thing where it's like he doesn't have to die like like Miles's dad doesn't have to die you know they, they save him from whatever they think but he's going to die anyway you know, like, there's something where, like, they, he literally can't save him, and he reveals himself to his dad that he's Spider-Man and stuff, and I, you know, I think that's actually would be a really tragic thing, but I think that might just be the way, because that is Spider-Man. But who knows? I, but Beyond the Spider-Verse is the next one, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that a lot, and I feel like Marvel is <laughs> got a little bit, like... Why are these movies so good? They keep on showing us up. Because, like, honestly, this is better than 
And I, I, I think, I, yeah, I enjoyed this movie more than Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 just because I felt like I was with all the characters and the motivations throughout it. Although, I do have one question. We got the, the, the Spider-Man of the universe of Mumbahattan, I think it was. Uh, you know, where it's just, it seems like, uh, you know, Arab and American culture collided sort of thing. Um, but did he know about this sort of canon thing? Because I, I, it seemed like he didn't know that his, you know, girlfriend's dad was supposed to die. You know, it, it seemed like, it's not like he was like, why did you do that? Or something like that. You know, it didn't feel like that was something that he knew about. But I actually really liked that it. it was, he was talking about how easy being Spider-Man was for him. So if this was the writer, if I was a writer, you know, I would be talking about how, hey, everything's on easy street for him. Then bam, he's hit with a little bit of dose of reality. Oh, the spot. I, I got to talk about the spot because I, they went... They turn the spot from being like an accidentally good foe, like like every time they try to punch him, they'd accidentally go through a portal and hit themselves. But it was all done by accident. The guy literally kicks his own butt, and that was super hilarious. But then they turn him to like a freak of nature. Like you think he's like a really like nothing of a villain, just the thing that he Miles has to deal with through the first act. But then he turns into this like. Okay, this is a interdimensional threat sort of thing here, and I'm actually terrified of his look. I'm really interested to see how they wrap that up, how they wrap up the stuff with the new Miles as the Prowler. I, I'm really interested to see how it all turns out. And I will say, I like the ending where we see Miles put his finger on the metal, and you know that he's just about to sh you shoot out his electric charge. So I think that's actually really, really cool. But hey, uh, let me know what you thought in the comments below, and uh, I'll see you in the next review. Bye. Be sure to check out some of these other videos on my channel. And wait for more coming soon.